So I actually stumbled across you and your church actually on TikTok. Yep. That's how I got in contact with you. It would be cool to check out what you got going on and just get a tour of everything that you're kind of involved in on a Sunday morning from the production and tech side of things. I'm the production director here at First Baptist Brunswick. I've been here for about two and a half years now. We run about 700 people every Sunday morning here in our worship center. It seats around 750 people, and our church is about 150 years old, so we've got like a multi-generational service, and we play a mix of you know hymns and traditional music as well as newer contemporary songs like Elevation. All right, so let's go ahead and start with audio. Give us a quick rundown of what you got going on. Yep, so here at Front of House, we're running a Soundcraft SI Impact. We've been using it for about four years now. It's done the job, but we're planning on moving to, in the next coming year, to the Allen & Heath Avantis. Um, just more capability, more processing power. But this is what we have now. We have it all over our campus, in other rooms, children's, you know, students, all of that. Everything audio structured is based on our Dante network. That's how we're sending audio from the stage, here, bands, in ears broadcast audio so everything's based on the Dante network most of the inputs come in here to front of house we have a couple of you know pastor and like host mic we've got eight wireless vocal mics for our uh, vocalists in the band we typically run on a normal Sunday an acoustic guitar electric guitar bass piano Nord or keys we've got drums and then we've got a full orchestra and a choir every Sunday morning so that is a challenge mixing in a room like this but we do the best we can we've got a couple of like computer channels of audio something unique about our setup is we use Ableton to run clicking tracks for the whole band and that's controlled in the drum cage by our drummer and so that computer is a MacBook Pro running Ableton and it is connected to our Dante network. So we're sending from there 18 individual channels of tracks straight out of Ableton. It hits the Dante network and comes over here. So this gives our audio engineers here at Front of House and broadcast flexibility when mixing all of the stems. Are your stage boxes Dante compatible? So as soon as they're hitting the stage box, it turns into a Dante signal? That's a good question. And the answer is no. Our stage box by the stage is a Soundcraft uh, stage box. And that, all the inputs go from there. It comes over here on a Cat5 cable. And from there, we go in here into the settings and assign each input. If you come look over here, if I select, you know, acoustic guitar, and go to uh, input, you can see uh, here we've named it and that's the location. It's coming on SRA04. That's the input on the stage box and we're direct outputting it on Dante. That's Dante 14. And so that's how it's getting into the Dante network from here. The back of our console has a Dante card and that's plugged directly into our Dante switch. On a typical Sunday morning, we've got a full band using in-ears, um, typically eight vocalists, and then our whole orchestra is on in-ears. So total of around 30 people on in-ears. And so that's all on the Avion system through Dante. So they're getting 16 channels and they can make their own mix on stage. So we're not having to worry about that here at Front House. Cool, cool. That's a lot, that's a lot of in-ear mixes. Yeah, it is. It's, it would be too much for us to handle. The only thing we're, you know, mixing here as far as the choir, they have a couple of monitors and we have a pre-fader mix here where we can send them whatever they need to their monitors over right. there. And the good thing is with the Avions, we're able to, you know, the band can save their mix to a specific button on it. And so every week they can go and recall their mix and it's saved from the previous time they played here. So that makes it super easy and helps with sound check in the mornings. The console we're doing roughly 64 inputs and we're only giving to the avions 16 channels so they're having to be grouped so for our drums we have a you know drum mix here everything on this layer is turned off except for the drums and we've you know already eq'd them compressed you know put gates on everything and it's the level that we want we send that out to the avion under one channel and they're able to you know increase or decrease that volume we're not having to really worry about that it's kind of set and forget and that opens up more channels for the avions on stage so here's our rack for all of our wireless stuff we're using eight wireless handheld mics and they're the Shure ULX-D. We have a system of talkback mics. It helps, you know, communicate between production side and band. It kind of links us together. We've got typically like a podium mic, but you know, um, they're able to just turn it on and turn it off. And this goes straight to the um, band's in-ears. We've got handheld mics down here as well, where the person running Pro Presenter, if there's a problem during rehearsal, they're able to, you know, flip it on and communicate straight to the band. And that's all 
inputs going into the front of house console and that's sending it to a mix to the Avions. So everybody's able to stay in communication with each other. On stage, we have just a regular mic. Whoever can use it, uh, just run up to it and talk in it. And then our drummer has a talkback mic. So he's able to talk with the worship leader before or in the middle of the service if there's a problem or something needs to be worked out as well as communicate back to us here in the production world so we can figure out a problem if something's going wrong or be flexible in the moment if something comes up during the service. So moving over here to Pro Presenter, just give me a quick rundown of, of what you got going on here. Yep, so we've got Pro Presenter running on an iMac. We're running Pro Presenter 7, the latest version. And this is our workhorse for all things, graphics, videos, lyrics, sermons, everything is in here. We're using the Blackmagic Decklink Duo to output a key and fill channel for lower third graphics. And then we are outputting a stage display that goes to the back monitor for the band as well as production running timers, clocks, lyrics, all that good stuff. And then we've got a four channel that is just running a constant loop of all of our pre-service slides so that before the service, if there's a problem with like a sermon slide that our pastor's given us or we need to change something, we're able to keep the slides looping on the front screen, but we're able to go in and edit a lyric or a sermon slide really fast without changing what's going to the front monitors. So that's all four of your Decklink Duo outputs? Right, there. it gives you five, but you if you're using key and fill, you're only able to do four out. So yep, we're using all four of them. As far as stage display, we have everything set to a slide. So if I click a video, it will start the, it'll tell you exactly how long's left on the video. So there's no confusion as far as on the, they can see that on the stage, they know exactly when the video is going to end as well as production knows that. If I click the first slide of the worship lyrics, it's automatically changed it to the lyrics. So we have the current and upcoming slide as well as slide notes for every single slide. In case something changes, you know, we can see there's a four measure intro, this song, everybody's coming in on unison. Um, so our worship assistant does a good job of updating these to make sure everything's accurate and it helps everybody know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Right. So you write out notes for every single song. When we import a, a song into ProPresenter, we go in and change it to our arrangement that we want. And then we go in and add slide notes for every slide. And you can see that. When I click the sermon, if I click this first, there's a lot of stuff going on here. If I click this first slide, it started, you know, change the stage display layout. They can see the clock and how long's roughly left. And if I, you know, throw up a scripture, you can see the scriptures there. So it just kind of, you know, we remember every time we set up a service within a playlist, we change the stage display as we constantly go. So everybody knows exactly what's going on. We have a couple of macros and it just helps, you know, you can sign one button to do multiple functions. We've got one when we automatically start the software, it changes, starts timers and changes stage displays and stuff. But we're using a stream deck and running companion software. So we're able to basically have like physical buttons to press besides the keyboard for each song, you know, intro video, song, welcome time, sermon bumper, sermon, and then I can go like forward or backwards with the slide as well as I've got other stuff set up that I can shuffle through. But like if I hit sermon bumper and it's started the sermon bumper right here. So it helps a volunteer if you know, this gets kind of chaotic. You always know you can go in here and hit clear all and it's going to stop the video. Cool. Is this stuff down here? Is this related to ProPresenter at all or what's right this here? This has lighting, a universe system, our, an amp for the outside speakers. And then this is our Dante switch for audio. We've got to love the Apple mouses. They never work when they're dead. So we've got like backup wired mount mouses and keyboards ready to go. One unique thing we do right before our service, we have like kind of like a pre-show with a bunch of hosts and they it's just for online and they're able to connect specifically with the people watching online. We use the same computer to run lower third graphics for that. So if I click this first slide, it's going to animate the names in. It brings in a little timer and you can see it here on the, you know, overlaid on the video. We've got the service starts in timer and we've got this. The great thing about this is I was thinking about doing it in like After Effects and then exporting the video file and having to bring it in every time. But that's not great if something changes, say like one of the hosts calls out last minute, I don't have time to go back to After Effects and re-export a video. So I can go in here and literally just go to edit slide. And these are just text boxes that I've edited and created within ProPresenter. So I'm able to change the name super easily like that. And then if I go out here and I re-click it, now it's, you know, popped up. It's already built with the animations and all of this is done inside ProPresenter. That's nice to have it all just right there 
and you don't have to go, like you said, export anything out from After Effects or do anything like that. So then you just brought a logo PNG in there and then you just made a blue background. Right, yeah. So most of this is actually boxes within ProPresenter. You can see your, yeah, your layer. I, I, dro I dropped that in, but if I go here, this is actually a box made within a right. ProPresenter and I'm able to make it slightly transparent. And then for animations, it's all done over here by just you know selecting the layer and then you set your animation type, the du duration, all of that. So you can just play around within ProPresenter and get some pretty cool results. That's cool. And that probably didn't take that long to, to make. No, to, like 30 Pro minutes to figure it out and yeah. it's here for every Sunday we need it and it's easy to edit and change whatever we need every Sunday. Lyrics, same concept, it's all keyed on. We use the Decklink Duo, like I said, and that's outputting fill and key. So we're able to you know have transparent logos. If we show a black image, it's actually keying out the black, so there's no problems there. And on a typical Sunday, we do iMag in the room, so it's important to have lower thirds on top of the video so the people in the room can see it as well as online. For worship, we've got the lower thirds, and for sermon, we've got scripture just with the image behind it so it's easy to read as well as like sermon points. So your entire like sermon is always lower third. Right, yeah. There might be, if, you want, if the pastor wants to bring in a full image, we'll throw that up or edit it. But typically, unless it is like a huge quote and we can't fit it on a lower third then we will put it in a lower third format and our pastor he has ProPresenter on his computer and he's got this template and the theme so every Sunday he goes in he types in his scripture he builds his presentation and he just emails it to me and I pull it right in I just make sure everything's there it's working and it's that easy that's nice building it right in ProPresenter so you don't have to Right. Translate it or import a PowerPoint. Yeah, or anything nobody like wants that. PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> you have a couple music tracks in ProPresenter. Yep. So as well? we've got a bunch of different, you know, playlists for Sunday morning. We've got five different options of music. And the great thing is when we start our service every Sunday morning with like an intro video to start the service off. And when I click that, it's fading the music out and starting the video. So you don't have to worry about, you know, going over to Spotify and muting that. Whatever we can do to make it easier for the volunteer helps, uh, you know, eliminate errors and make it easy on everybody. So we've got a separate mix coming off the board and we label it comms and it's got pretty much everything we need, all the talkback channels, plus all the, you know, vocal mics and musicians also has the click and talkbacks. We've got a system of talkback mics all over, you know, front of house, the stage, video room, but that all that mix comes here to this headphone amp and each station has, you know, headphones that they can plug into. They're able to hear click, they're able to hear the guide cues. So when running ProPresenter, they know exactly when that course is coming up, there's no question. And it just helps everybody, you know, stay in communication with each other. That's super beneficial to ProPresenter and lighting, as well as video when you want to cut to camera three, a nice close up, and you want to do it right at the start of verse two, you have it in your ear and it helps. That's cool. I like that a lot. Locked in with the click. And this is like a super cheap way of doing this. I mean, this costs like 30 bucks plus some cable. So it's super cost effective to do this. All right. So last thing here in this front of house booth is lighting. Talk to me about that a little bit. For lighting, we're using Vista 3 and we've got, I believe this is the M1 hardware physical faders. And we've got, you know, one fader map to a cue list and every Sunday morning the cue list is already built for the volunteer they just follow along and we, we every volunteer knows what each cue means and it's super simple to follow along with with lighting we try to keep it simple on a Sunday morning we have a lot of natural light so we're not able to do too many you know lighting effects we don't use haze on a typical Sunday morning something that adds to it we've got a lot of stage lighting choirs we've got some movers kind of just help you know, with the energy level of the song. But we keep it super simple for the volunteer to follow along with. If we have a special event like a like a Christmas production or concert, we will have we have a hazer and we'll use that when it's dark in the room and that helps with like lighting effects. But on a typical Sunday morning we try to keep it, you know, simple, not distracting, but something that adds to the service. We're using a combination hanging on the ceiling, combination of Elation and Chave products. Six Elation Da Vinci's, those are our movers and we're able to you know, easily position those on stage. And then we've got a ton of Chave Colorado washes, and these are like the colored washes you see on the back of the wall, and I'll turn them off. But just, they you know, zoom out, we can focus them in. They don't move, but they're super great fixtures, super reliable. And then we have a lot of Source 4 fixtures, where we're able to, you know, wash the stage with light as well as the back line and choir. We get a nice, even, consistent front light. 
Okay, so we're here at the stage now, but first just tell me a little bit about this room, the entire process that you've gone through with renovating it and making changes and challenges that you've had with it. Four years ago, this room looked completely different. We had your typical red church carpet. We had pew style seating, and then the stage was much smaller. We were super packed on space. We had nowhere to go. Four years ago, we did a huge renovation, including the whole building, room wise, interior design, everything on top of AV. So we've got like the theater style seating and we've got about 750 seats in this room as well as you know carpet on the floor to kind of help absorb as much sound as possible we are not able to put acoustic treatment in this room so that is a huge challenge when mixing audio because there's a lot of slap back in this room and so you just got to keep that in mind with mixing but once you put a couple hundred bodies in it it kind of helps to absorb some of the sound but as far as the stage over here we've got piano we've got a bass guitar electric acoustic we've got a keys player on a nord stage three as well as a full orchestra to the right on stage left and then a whole choir section. We've got drums in an isolated cage that was custom built as well as like a percussion section on the side. Right here we've got an acoustic guitar player. He's got an avion so he can mix his own ears. He's got his like headphone cable as well as a quarter inch cable to plug in his guitar. We've got a DI box. Depending some electric players bring in their own pedal boards. It just depends on who's playing that Sunday morning. That's at each station. Keys they've got an avion. Piano they've got one as well and then all of the vocalists have wireless in-ear packs that they're able to mix. We have floor pockets everywhere on stage and these have XLR inputs as well as, as well as power that go back to the stage box. So we're able to, you know, not have to run XLRs all over the place. It helps keep everything clean and tidy. Did you plan out the layout of all these floor pockets and stuff when you renovated a couple years back? I didn't personally, but the AV company that did the integration, they planned all this. And so it was just designed, not specifically for each station, but just have the most flexibility wherever on stage. We've got like up to eight floor pockets, so you can pretty much patch anything you need anywhere. Instead of having to like manually move it up or down, and depending on the person's height, we've got it on like a desk type thing that you know you raise up and down. And we took the top off, so it's just the base of it. So you're able to like lower the lower it all the way down, or you can raise it depending on who's playing each Sunday. Before we had two separate services, and one person liked to sit down, and the other person liked to stood, and it was a pain to like you had to get two people to hold this and you know crank it up. So we just got the standing desk base of it and that solved that problem. So here's the Avion section for our uh, vocalists. We have on a Sunday morning four wireless vocalists on the front of the stage. They have a wireless mic as well as wireless in-ears and this is just the Shure PSM 300s and they're on like an antenna combiner as well as the antenna and so they can mix their own mix so we don't have to worry about that at front of house. Everything can, can be done here and we've got this on both sides. So here's our wireless microphones. We've got four for the front vocalists as well as four that we end out to specific choir members and we're running the Shure ULX D with a Beta 87A capsule. And so you use that capsule for all the mics are the same? Right, yep. Every vocalist microphone has this as well as we have a spare microphone for a, somebody talking on stage like a host or pastor if they want to use a handheld. And then on top of that we've got a wireless pack, the Shure ULX D with a Countryman headset that our pastor uses every Sunday. On any given Sunday we have almost 30 people between the orchestra, the band, the vocalists on in-ears so that kind of of makes a logistical nightmare. To make this easy, we've got all these chairs and they're running headphone cables and they're all labeled. And all of this goes back to a headphone amp over here that's powered by a Avion. So they're all sharing the same mix, but they can individually control their volume for each uh, cable. They're, they're able to get clicked, they're able to stay on time as well as hear whatever they need to hear. They only wanna use one ear so they can hear their actual instrument themselves. Every chair has its own cable. And then like this is A6. So if the person over here is like, hey, can you turn A6? up all they have to do is go over here and turn the knob um, cool. for that and it's all labeled right here for room mic we're running a Rode NTG5 we use it mainly for uh, during worship time when people are clapping or laughing and it kind of helps people watching online feel like they're more in the room as well as you know people on in ears when they have both ears in they're so isolated they like to hear kind of the ambience of the room so here's our stage box for all of our inputs on stage. We've got right here the main Soundcraft SI impact the stage box for that, as well as our avions for Dante. And then we've got our amps for our line array system. So all of the floor pockets are labeled right here. You can follow the label. This one is box 1010-2. So if I know I'm plugging in electric guitars to 1010-2 on stage, I can plug this into input 11, and then that will pop up on the board. And I just say, you know, stage box input 11. Right. So it makes it super easy for people to patch. Something 
something unique. We've got all these cards and it's our pastor. We kind of made a joke out of it. But if you scan the QR code, it will take you to a spreadsheet that can be updated in real time. So we've got these stationed all over the building. So people are able to see what input number and where it's supposed to be patched. It kind of just helps with communication. Cool. I like that idea a lot. And then for the stage screen, you're just using a TV. Right. Oh, it's, God. I don't know the size, but it's, it's pretty large. It's just a, it actually has an SDI input. So we're just sending okay. that. It's connected directly to the smart video hub. So we're able to send whatever content we need to it. This is camera six. We use it on side stage right here, stage right. And we're running a Canon C70 with a Canon 24 to 105 lens. It's running at 1080 straight into the wireless Teradak Ace 500, which has been awesome. It's one of their entry level products, but it has, you know, relatively low latency, almost zero latency compared to other products like Hollyland. It's just powered off of a battery here and that goes straight to the receiver. And then that is HDMI converted into SDI, which goes to the video hub. And a cool thing about this camera is we're able to go in and crop. So if I zoom in, I can go in here and hit from Super 35, I can crop it to a 16. So I'm able to digitally crop in while still holding my 1080 resolution. Cool. So I'm able to get even tighter shots with this 24 to 105 lens. Their main area of coverage would be like piano, you know, drums, bass, acoustic, choir. So every camera has its specific role of what it's supposed to shoot. Not everybody's shooting the same thing. It makes it easy for the video director and everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. So for the most part, is this, this camera operator pretty much just right here? This is kind of- Yep, so they kind of live in this area. Okay. They can walk back and forth. Um, try not to be too distracting because they are on stage, but there's so many people on stage that it kind of, you know, they fit in They kind of blend well. in. Right, so yeah, their, their main job is to shoot keys right here and then the the musicians over on this side as well as the choir. Right. So if there's a, you know, musician that has a specific part coming up, they'll highlight that. The great thing about the Teradak Ace 500, we've had it for about a year and a half now. It's been great. You can get a super great, you know, uh, connection. We're able to take this camera outside across the street and it still has a good connection. It's not grainy, it's super reliable. So we're able to do like a pre-service show outside or inside or move it wherever and not have to worry about it cutting in and out. When they did the renovation, they built this custom drum cage, which is pretty cool. It gives us a lot of flexibility at front of house, pretty much total sound isolation. We've got a couple things in the drum cage. We've got a drum set that I know nothing about. I'm not a drummer. And then we've got a monitor that has our stage display. This drummer runs Ableton. So they connect the computer and it goes straight into the Dante network with this. Uh, USB-C cable. Um, so it's important for them to know timing, like once the video stops, how long until, you know, when they start the tracks. So they've got a stage display monitor so they can follow along, you know, stay in the loop of things. As well as a talkback, which goes to the band's ears, as well as production. It's got an on-off switch so they can control it themselves. And then for our PA in the house, we've got a DNB line array system. This is your video broadcast room. Just give us a rundown of this of this entire room and what you got going on in here. Yep, so we have a couple of stations here. First off, we've got like a chat host area. So somebody's able to monitor the streams going out, chat with, you know, as the church in the comment section on Facebook and YouTube and our website and engage with our online community. Right here, we've got like our video director set up. We're running the ATEM 2ME switcher. We've got 2ME's to work with. We've got a separate per presenter computer as backup, as well as doing some other media content. And then over here, this is where we control our PTZ cameras. We've got two operators that sit here and we've got a third operator that's manning a camera on stage during worship. The great thing about these controllers, they're able to control multiple cameras at one time. So this operator that sits here is controlling camera one and camera two. And this one on the other side is doing camera three. If I select camera one, I'm able to zoom, zoom out and hit the lock button. And camera one is still zooming out. And I could go to camera two and start the zoom on that. So, and lock that. So basically I'm able to control two things and let them keep going. The assignments for each camera, camera one and camera two are, are designated to be more like wide shots and they're constantly zooming in and out during worship. Whereas camera three's main assignment is to be waist up on the worship leader. Camera six on stage is focused on the backline musicians as well as the choir. They're able to move super fast once their shot's clear to find a new shot. And that's running from the Canon C70 and with a Teradek wireless unit on top. The controller is a data video brand and the camera is a data video brand as well. It's the PTC150 and we've got three of them. They're mounted, one's underneath the balcony and the other two are mounted on the wall. They're super discreet. They're not distracting. Nobody really knows they're there without looking. And in the future, I would like to have manned cameras maybe on platforms just because you get better image quality. But we've been super happy with the results. As long as you have 
good lighting on stage, PTZ cameras can look good. I know a lot of people think PTZ cameras look kind of grainy and stuff. We haven't had that problem as long as we have good stage lighting on, on the front end of things. Right. Like you said, you have a lot of natural light coming through the windows, so you have a lot of great light to work with. Right, PTZ right, cameras. and with these, we're able to manually adjust the iris, and so we're constantly adjusting iris as we're zooming in and out, as well as, you know, if a cloud changes above, our room just got so much brighter, we need to compensate. And we don't have to have a CCU, a camera control unit. They're all able to do everything here. They can change the, the settings in the camera, all that's done right here. So those are your first three cameras, you said, and then you have a C70 at camera six, but then what are you using for your drum camera, do you know? Yep, so drum camera is just a Marshall, and it's on like a suction cup mount straight to the window. It's super cheap, super easy, and you just kind of leave it and forget it. So this is our rack just for you know, broadcast video. We've got our first thing is the, the Blackmagic Smart Video Hub 40 by 40. It takes all the inputs and all the outputs so you're not having to go to the back of the rack and you know swap SDI cables. We've got a monitor here, and this is the same monitor that's in our broadcast audio room, and it just helps them see what's going on because they're in a dark, isolated room. But it takes you know all the input so i'm able to go to destination and then select you know like for multi-viewer number two uh it's sending our, our ptz stage camera right here or our pov stage camera right here i'm able to go to select a source and i can easily change that to a different uh, camera i hit take and it's just automatically switched it to a new camera so it's, it's super easy it, it makes stuff so much easier it's a, it's a lot more effective and it saves time once you've got it set up, you can easily swap whatever you need. Because you're running everything, all, all ProPresenter outputs running through here first, everything from the switcher. Right. And then you're running like any TV in the building, like anywhere you're kind of running it through here. Right. If you look for our sources, we've got like all of our cameras coming in here. We've got ProPresenter, Key, Fill, Stage Display, Slide Loop, Mac 2, ME1 Program, ME2 Program Clean. All of these are patched into here. So you, the idea is you get everything in here and you get everything going out. And so you just press two or three buttons and everything can go anywhere it needs to. Yeah, that adds a lot of flexibility. Yep. From there, we're also using a Blackmagic product. We're using the ATEM 2ME production switcher and we're able to get 20 inputs and do two separate cuts. So we do a cut for our online broadcast as well as a cut for our in the room for the projectors. We do iMag every Sunday morning and we're able to link those together or do two separate cuts depending on what we're doing that day. And then for encoding, for streaming we're using a the resi prism encoder resi has been great to us we switched to them about a year and a half ago and no problems ever since it works every sunday morning and i never have to worry about you know internet cutting in and out it's super consistent and it always works what were you using before resi everything used to be data video we're kind of phasing that out with black magic gear but before that we were using this data video encoder and it was streaming as well as encoding to facebook and youtube it wasn't great it caused a lot of problems but with our internet we we're able to get fiber internet in here so we've got pretty fast upload speeds which helps resi but just the other day our internet went out for like a minute and a half with it just going out and so resi was able to stream the whole service no problem within the minute and a half delay it has it was able to get reestablished connection with the internet and the viewer at home never even knew we lost internet and then for recording we're just using a black magic recorder it's sdi input and it just records to an sd card every one of the hyper decks right yeah so right here is where our video director sits we've got the black Blackmagic ATEM 1ME panel. We've got up to two ME, so we're able to toggle between and do two separate cuts. We've got two monitors. This one's for ME1, our online broadcast. And then we've got ME2, which is for our projector screens in the room. Most of the time they're linked together, but before the service, we do like a pre-show with host and we're able to cut, put them online and they're not in the room on the screens. We're able to keep the video loop going through the screens. And so it just helps sending multiple video signals different places at the same time. And then during the service, during worship and the sermon, we link them together. So the same thing people are watching our line is the same thing on the room. And then you said you had some macros that you had created on the uh, ATEM software. Right, we've got two ME's. You can go over here and toggle between ME1 and ME2. But the problem is with that, if I hit here, now I've lost control of ME1. If something happens really quickly and I need to change something, I'd have to go back here and then, you know, tap where I need to cut. But with the macros row, I'm able to record macros. So basically what I did was I went to ME2 and I said, cut camera one on ME2. So if I were to press this button, camera one is on the screens and we've kept the same thing going online. So I'm able to basically have a 2ME panel 
with a one ME panel, saving a little bit of money. And so we're able to easily cut between which camera we want, as well as do something completely different online. For ProPresenter, we've just got a secondary MacBook Pro and it's running as like a backup to the main computer. It doesn't do very much. It's just there in case we've got the sermon imported just in case that computer went down. We, we've got it here ready to go every Sunday. Once a worship song starts, we've got like a little worship bug that comes in. So if I animate that in from this ProPresenter computer, it will come in and then after about five or six seconds it automatically comes out and we do that at the start of every song so that just people know what song it is if they have any questions as well as at the end of this the service we've got like our ccli credits here ready to go it's got other content uh, but it is also mainly acting as a backup to their main ProPresenter computer. And that song name slide, you just made that in ProPresenter again and just added animations to it? Right, it's the same thing that we were doing for the animations on the other ProPresenter computer. It's all built into ProPresenter, so it's easy to change it every week. At the start of our live stream, we do like the pre-show hosting segment, and we made a custom transition. It's like a stinger transition built into the ATIM software, and you know, it's just a series of PNG images that are, have a transparent background and once it fills the screen, it makes a cut behind it. And then that's how it transitions between the shots. But the way we did that, and there might be a better way, let me know if there's a better way. But from YouTube, this is what I figured out into the like stills library. I uploaded every still image and I recorded a macro of like each still per frame. And so it follows along to each still until it gets to the full screen. Once it makes the full screen, it does the cut and then it finishes the rest of the images. This was like a super easy way that I figured out how to do this. There might be a better way. Let me know if there is, but we're able to do just like a cool custom transition. And we obviously don't use this in the middle of worship, but it's cool to go, if we're doing like an online segment, it's cool to do some, some cool custom transition with our branding style and colors. So you just made an ATAM macro that has the still photos moving and then the cut between right. the preview and the program. Right, with the macros, you can just go in and record it and you literally just follow the action and you hit record and then you hit, you stop recording once you're done. But I just progressed through each image and said, you know, one frame in between each image so you get the full transition right. between hand. And I actually like that a lot because I know a lot of the ATEM switchers, they don't allow for video media files to be imported right. into the switcher. So right. that's actually a nice workaround for, for people who might want to have some kind of transition they can just add a bunch of stills like that make them in photoshop or canva or wherever right add them into the atem software control and then just create a macro executing that transition on the atem we've got two downstream keyers one is set to our main ProPresenter lyrics for uh like worship and sermon and then the other one is this computer over here we do almost 99 percent of everything doing hard cuts and no you know auto dissolves just because we think that it looks cleaner if you look at the majority of churches with you know great media production departments they're doing almost all cuts. And that's because when you watch TV, a TV show or, or something online, you never really see a slow fade or transition. It's all cuts and our eye is so used to hard cuts anyway. It's just kind of awkward to do a dissolve. The only time we'll do a dissolve is if we're going into like a video or coming out of a video or going to a graphic. It's just kind of like nice to auto it fades as opposed to a hard cut. But between cameras, cutting between cameras, we're doing pretty much only cuts. So do you manually turn the ProPresenter downstream key on and off? I could like automate it and put it on the stream deck, but it's just nice to have, you know, control over here. Here's our audio broadcast suite. Feels like going into the dungeon. <laughs> We're using Pro Tools to do all of our online mixing. It's connected to the Dante network, so we're getting every individual channel and we're able to mix it and then send it back out on the same Dante cable back to our video switcher. We've got a couple monitors. These two are dedicated both to Pro Tools. We record in Pro Tools, we multi-track everything as well as live mix. And then this right monitor is the multi-view that you saw in the other rooms. You're in a dark room with no windows, so it's nice to see what's going on and oh, this person's walking up stage, I didn't see them, I, I gotta turn their mic on. We've got this Personas fader port. It's got 16 faders and they're all motorized. And this is acting as just a keyboard to the computer. And so if I go over here and change, you know, this fader, it's changing it on the hardware, you know. So if I mix it here, it changes here. It's not doing any processing. It's just acting as a keyboard. We are using the Luke Hendrickson template that we've made a lot of changes to and edited, but that was our good starting point. We've got all of our inputs here, all the microphones, some effects. We've got groups for all of our microphones, our crowd and choir, band, drums, all of our tracks and stems. From Ableton, we're getting 16 or 18 individual channels of every stem that we're able to have control in mixing over here. You're using some stock plugins with Pro Tools and then some Waves? 
Yep. So the the template that we used mostly has the stock plugins due to like cost savings and stuff. We're using Wavestune on all of our vocalists. In this room, we've got like two separate sets of speakers, a nicer studio pair that we use 99% of the time. And then we've got like a cheap reference monitor. So we're able to, you know, flip a switch over here, just reference to different sounds on different monitors so that the audio engineer here has a better idea of what they're sending out to the stream. Here at First Baptist Brunswick, we've got an awesome team of volunteers. We've got, you know, great technology here that we've worked hard on, but none of this is possible to operate a Sunday without our awesome team of volunteers. We have a bank of around 25 volunteers, and it takes about seven or eight each Sunday to fulfill every position. We couldn't do it without them. I'm the only production person on staff here that handles all of our systems, and everything else is volunteer red. Our audio, most of our audio engineers are all volunteers. Camera operators are volunteers. Purpose center, lighting. Everything that you see here is manned by volunteers every Sunday morning. Seeing the, the videos and stuff that you post on, on TikTok, everyone looks like a professional here. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. they're awesome. Nobody's been like professionally trained. We've just all done this we've learned together and we believe in doing everything excellent and if we you know work hard we want to put the best product out there yeah it definitely shows in the in the stuff that you guys post and the, the clips and stuff that I've seen of your guys's live stream because you also send this broadcast to a local TV station right so it's right. not just a live stream but you're also sending it to a TV station yep every weekend we air our services on our local cable television Comcast here uh, in Brunswick and so if you watch on channel 98 you're able to watch our services. So I think we pretty much covered everything here. Thanks for showing me around. If people want to check you out on TikTok or wherever, if people want to follow you, where can they go to kind of see more of the behind the scenes stuff that you post? Yeah, the best place to follow me for church production content is TikTok and my uh, username is at Colby Griner. Yeah, sounds good. Well, if you guys have any other questions, I mean, drop a comment, maybe I can answer or maybe I'll reach out to you, see if you can answer them. And yeah, appreciate you having me out. Really enjoyed it. Of course. <laughs>